this is our Friends of Wheeling tour on March 23rd, 2044. Thank you. Uh, we are here at 1068 Market Street, and this is the second floor of the building that is Tito's Sloppy Dogs downstairs. So we'll be touring the second floor and the third floor, I yep. think. Um, each of these has been turned into a two-bedroom apartment. So let me give you a little bit of history on this. The early deed records show that William Paxton purchased part of Lot 121 on Market Street in the spring of 1851 from a William Wickham, who had bought it about a year earlier from Parker Campbell and his wife Isabel. Campbell's gravesite information states that he was a Confederate officer born in Washington, PA, glassmaker in Wheeling, and sugar plantation in Louisiana, banker, broker, insurance salesman in Richmond, and he died in Jacksonville, Florida. William Paxton, who probably was the one who built this building, had immigrated from County Down, Ireland in 1801 and purchased a good bit of property in Wheeling after his arrival. The 1850 census lists his occupation as merchant. A Wheeling map dated 1853 shows one or more buildings on Lot 121, but it's likely that Paxton or his heirs built the structure that's here now. This is not a Civil War era uh, building, you can tell. Now, William Paxton happened to be the father of a more well-known Paxton, James W. Paxton, who was very involved with the statehood hearings when West Virginia became a state and was um, an ardent Union supporter. And um, he was on Governor Pierpont's council. He later lived in a home that was called Uplands, which is now Alton Mine, Alton Pike. Okay, that was the son of William Paxton. All right, so we have this early map, and this will be online so that you can see it later. An 1871 map actually shows three distinct buildings here. So this building might date back to 1870. Not sure. Uh, the first reference found for an occupant, the first one I was able to find, was 1877. A uh, city directory showed that Hogue and Company Hardware was located at this address. It was operated by two brothers. One was named Thudis. He also went by Thomas Alvin Hogue, H-O-G-E, and his brother Kenworthy Johnson Hogue. The company was advertised as selling hardware and cutlery, carpenters, butchers, cabinet makers, and builder supplies, agricultural implements, and farm machinery of all kinds, wire goods, guns, and ammunition. Their later inventory included bicycles and seeds. So you could get them. <laughs> um, the one brother, T. A. Hogue, apparently continued in the business without his brother later on, uh, but added his son, P. Raymond Hogue, as one of the employees. T. A. Hogue's obituary stated that. Quote, he was known to every farmer throughout this section. 1884 Sanborn insurance map obviously shows this building. Uh, there's a three-story brick building on this site, same footprint, so we know for sure that it was here in, uh, in 1884. The property changed ownership in early 1906 when it was purchased from the Paxton heirs by Isaac Gary, G-A-R-E-E. -E. Um, but T.A. Hogan Company continued as tenants. Following the death of T.A. Hogan in 1917, the property was rented to Brunhouse Brothers Restaurant, and C. William C. Gordon had a, a store on the second floor that sold artificial limbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there were also a couple tenants listed, presumably on the upper floors. Um, from the time of the 1934 city directory until the 1975 directory, it was known as the Dinner Bell Restaurant. So many, yeah. uh, many former uh, old-time Wheeling residents will remember the Dinner Bell. And the, the owners of various restaurants down the line from there seemed to be mostly of Greek heritage. It was George Demas, George Spanomanilis, I guess. Um, next door to the north was the men's shop. And then there was Corner Electric and later American uh, Electric Appliance Center to the south. Uh, the Blue House restaurant is listed at this address in 1977, and then a Wheeling restaurant from about 1980 to 1991. New Neighborhoods Inc. was listed to the south in 1985, and later on 
Um, Gloria's Bargain Store was to the north, and uh, Wheeling Veterans Center was to the south. Meanwhile, deeds show that Minos Orphanitis purchased the property in 1985, and, and those with Greek heritage, please excuse my pronunciation, John Zavalakis inherited it from Minos Zavalakis in 1997, mm -hmm. sold it to Mound City, Inc. in 2000. Mound City sold it to Thomas J. West and his wife in 2005, then UB Investments acquired it in 2011, and DC Ventures became the owners in 2013. Mm -hmm. The current owner is the Wheeling Investment Group, and Chad Thalman is that person. Uh -huh, and nice. so Chad is here, and he will tell you a little bit about the condition of the building before and what he's doing now. So, yeah, so I bought the building almost exactly a year ago. Um, the upper floor is the second floor, and the third floor were basically completely abandoned. Um, I think since maybe the 1950s, roughly. Uh, Tito's Hot Dogs was on the first floor when I bought the building. They're still there. Uh, they've been down there for a few years. Uh, but the second and third floor are both going to be two-bedroom apartments. The layout's very similar. The third floor is slightly bigger because the stairwell doesn't chop into the third floor as much as it chops into the, the, the second floor. Uh, there's a stairwell that comes up from the front of the building and runs up uh, from the front uh, sidewalk all the way to the third floor. And then there's a back stairwell that goes from the second floor up to the third floor that serves as a secondary egress. Um, but I have pictures of what this is, what the second floor looked like. Uh, about a year ago, that's facing the back of the building. This is what the third floor looked like facing the front of the building um, about a year ago. And then I also, um, there's three buildings right in a row. There's the Tito Sloppy Dogs, there's the Hair Salon, and then there's Taqueria. Uh, DC Ventures owned all three of them. And I, I purchased the Taqueria building at 1062, and then the Tito buildings at 1068. And I did remove the 10 off the front of the buildings. Um, but when you walk back outside, you can see I put wood up there and made it look, I think, more historical, more accurate to the time frame. Um, I'm about 90% done. I was hoping to be 100% done at this point, but uh, we still got doors and a few, you know, faucets and a, you know, uh, appliances and a few small things to do. This second floor two-bedroom apartment, I plan to, to rent as a 12-month lease. And the third floor two-bedroom apartment, it's a little bit bigger, a little bit nicer. I'm thinking about Airbnb and the third floor. You guys have any questions? Or? What type of rents do you think you can command for these units? I really have no idea. I mean, I'm no. open to, to suggestions and thoughts. I, you know, it's, it's about each floor is about 1,100 some square feet. Um, two bedrooms. Uh, there's going to be washer and dryers in each unit. You know, dishwashers, stainless steel appliances, granite countertops. Um, I, I don't know what I can get. I know the door saw main charges. I think 1,400 for a two bedroom, and they're about 900 square feet. Now they do have some amenities like a fitness center and rooftop bar, or rooftop area and stuff like that. I think uh, the steps will work as the fitness center. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and there is parking behind uh, the Taqueria building yeah. that the tenants here will be able to use. Yeah. So parking would be included in the rent. Okay, so can we walk through and see the rest? Absolutely. Right. So obviously this is uh, going to be like a combined kitchen living room. The layout on the third floor is very similar. What type of floors do you have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, vinyl. Um, yeah, vinyl. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is this is one bedroom here. This is the bathroom. It's going to be there's going to be a washer and dryer here, a hot water tank there, and you have the, the shower and sink in that area. You have another bedroom there. Okay. Now there's going to be a door here that would get you into the, the second floor apartment. Oh. Here, this is the way to get outside, and then there's parking. That's the back entrance. Yeah, this is the back entrance. Yeah. There. Okay. So this door needs replaced. We need to put some more doors there. And then this is going to be kind of the secondary egress <coughs> for the third floor.
Now the layout here is slightly different because we have more space. This bathroom is much bigger. You can Ooh. go all the way in. Yeah. And we did a little more high-end finishes in the shower. <gasps> nice. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. Check out the tub for shower. And then this is... Here's the front entrance. And then you got a bed in there. Yeah. And there'll be, yeah, there'll be a washer and dryer here. I like the doorknobs. Yes, I can have on Amazon. They were not that expensive. He's proud of the doorknobs. Bedroom. Ooh. So this living room has more space than the second floor yeah. because the, the, the steps chop into the second floor. Yeah. So this is slightly bigger on the third floor. I love those. Yeah, those are really great. Yeah. Get a nice view from here. Yeah. I actually like the second floor view a little better because the second floor has four windows that are close together. Uh -huh. The third floor has three windows that are a little more spread apart. Uh, but that gave me the chance to put have two lights on the hall there. Uh -huh. you know, people look nice. Yeah. Christmas parade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Christmas parade open by Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sunday Christmas. Sunday Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Let's think positive, shall we? Thank you very much. Absolutely. I really appreciate yeah, this. Gorgeous. And um, yeah. we'll welcome you again to all of those online.